Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to collect some seagrass rhizomes from the seabed. Uh, well, we've got uh, special permission to, to, to take 60 rhizomes from the seagrass bed from Nature Scott, the world, the conservation regulator, and also from the landowner who are crowning the state. In Scotland, we've notified them in advance this morning that we're out here to take away these rhizomes. Once we're finished with the rhizomes, they get packaged up, put in the box to keep them cool, and then we will drive them across to Duff Aquarium where they're going to be grown for a new exhibit for pipefish and seahorses and also help with outreach as well. Uh, this is the bag of rhizomes we've collected yesterday uh, with with help from the volunteers from my ocean community it was uh, a bit trickier than, than we expected you can see the rhizomes in here if you zoom in there you've got these really thick orange like root like structures they're not roots uh, there you can see see the roots there they're, they're those white bits so these are the rhizomes here which are the orange part and you can see the nodes and from these nodes you get the roots, so the roots are these really long white bits here and then right at the top we've got the leaves here. So these rhizomes are under the sediment and they store material and they help anchor the, uh, the plant within the sediment and these roots come off here obviously to, to help and to uh, anchor themselves even more and, and to also uh, get nutrients and oxygen. Uh, these shoots here, obviously, these these are the bits that, that are above the sediment surface, and these are pho photosynthetic. Uh, and this is where, in the summer, you will get some reproductive shoots forming, and that they will they will get seeds. Uh, with this uh, common eelgrass, most of the reproduction is done by these rhizomes. So these rhizomes creep underneath the surface, and you get new shoots and new roots coming from the internodes here. Rhizomes aren't roots, uh, they are really storage and anchoring structures and you can see the roots here, these are these fine white structures there just like in any other plant you get and obviously the uh, shoots come out from the top. When we went to collect the rhizomes uh, yesterday it was probably a bit trickier than we expected uh, even at low, low water, it was still about two, two and a half metres you had to dive down and they're quite firmly attached. So we, uh, we were using trowels to try and be as careful as we could. Uh, the water was quite rough and it was pretty cold. Uh, the air temperature, I think, was about 10 degrees and the water wouldn't have been much more than that, probably less than that. Well, you can't dig them out when you're using your hands. We have been told that you probably could. Uh, they're just too fir firmly attached and you'd be creating too much damage. So we used a trowel instead and we got, got a little technique going. Uh, so you can see here we actually have been pretty successful with removing the rhizomes. The technique was to, well, well the, the technique that we developed was to uh, kind of attack the rhizome, the, you know, you know, the shoots from a, a bit away from the, the shoot itself and slowly lever it up, uh, try and get some water un underneath it. Uh, and, and then you were able to lift up a couple of roots and rhizomes together uh, with, with that. We didn't cause really any da damage to the seabed because there's quite quite a lot there. So we've taken a really, really small amount. Uh, and then, yeah, these are all double bagged now. We'll take these across to Duff Aquarium. Uh, again, uh, thanks to Nature Scott and to Crown Estate Scotland for giving us permission to do this. And we're gonna keep them fully, fully in, in the loop uh, with how, how the rhizomes grow and how it looks after a while. So yeah, all ready to package them up, take, take them across to the aquarium where they'll get put into some sand substrate and hopefully within a few months time, they'll be there together with some seahorses and pipefish. So that's us dropped off the seagrass at the aquarium and then they're gonna grow in a special tank really optimized for seagrass growth. So that's really the end of the first chapter really. So we've learned a lot about collecting seagrass from the bed which is trickier than we thought but we got there in the end and now we've transported it across next stage really is to see how it grows and then learn some lessons from that 
and then hopefully in the future we'll have a nice stock of seagrass to use for translocations of our own or planting some seagrass seeds so that's all good